Every CSS property has a set of values it can accept. For example, we can use keywords that literally describe a value, like the color name blue, or the words auto and hidden. A value can also be described as a number, a length, an image, or a URL. Those values are categorized into what are called data types, and there are lots to choose from. Again, we don't have to remember every CSS data type and value out there. All we need is a good reference. And I'll show you a good reference, then cover the common values and units CSS properties accept. Before we get started, let's take a look at a great reference for CSS data types provided by the Mozilla Developer Network Docs. So here, we're able to see a list of all the available CSS data types. It starts with the angle data type and goes all the way down to this user indent data type. Now, we're not going to cover all or even most of these data types here, but we will cover the most important ones you'd probably use on a day-to-day -day basis. So what exactly is a CSS data type? Well, really, data type is just a fancy way of saying a type of CSS value. Earlier, when we learned about selectors, we used a few CSS properties and values so we could see how they affected certain elements on the page. So we've already used a few data types up to this point, one of the most common ones being the color data type for color values. So for example, the values orange, light blue, forest green, and light coral in these color properties are considered color data types. They're some of the predefined color keywords. So if we click the color value data type link in the MDN docs, we can see all the different ways we're able to define a color value. And we can use these color values for background color properties, color properties, border colors, shadows, and a few others listed here at the bottom of the page. And we'll revisit these later in this stage when we cover color values. So other common data types are integers, numbers, and percentages. And we can use any positive or negative integer, number, or percentage values for certain CSS properties. Usually, we'll define integer and number values with a length unit. Now, length units are part of the length data type. We can use units like pixels, ems, or rems to specify a unit of measurement for a number value. Now, we're going to cover these length units in the next video, but let me show you an example we wrote earlier that uses a number and a length value. So in our style sheet, we gave the h1 a font size property, and we gave it the value 90 pixels. So in this value, 90 is the number data type, and pixel is the length. And there should never be a space between the number and a length unit. Otherwise, it's invalid. Make sure to keep this length reference handy, because as I mentioned, we're going to cover most of these starting in the next video. So other common CSS data types are images and gradients. And these are commonly used with the background image property to give an element a background image or gradient. Now, for defining a background image, we write the path or URL to the image we want to display using a URI data type, which we use to point to a resource like an image, as we can see here in the example syntax. So now that we're a little more familiar with CSS data types and have a reliable reference, in these MDN docs, if we come across a CSS property later and we want to know the types of values it accepts, well, we can look for the data types. So for instance, if we want to know all the value types the font size property accepts, when we look up the font size property, we can see here under values that besides these predefined keyword values, font size also accepts a length and a percentage data type. Moving forward, with this simple knowledge, we're now able to find the answers and solutions to many questions or problems we may encounter.